This video shows a below-the-knee amputation for a patient with dry gangrene of the right foot. The desired tibial bone length is marked approximately 4 finger breadths, or around 10 centimeters, below the tibial tuberosity. The skin incision is marked 1 to 2 centimeters distal to this. A transverse marking envelops the anterior two-thirds of the leg. The posterior flat markings are extended medially and laterally as distally as possible, ensuring enough soft tissue coverage for the BKA stump later. The skin is incised with a 10 blade down to the fascia circumferentially. The fascia and muscles are further divided using electrocautery down to bone. Here, the muscles of the anterior compartment, such as the tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus are divided. In the anterior compartment, the anterior tibial pedicle is encountered. Proximal and distal control of the anterior tibial pedicle are obtained with hemostats, and the proximal end is stick tied with 3O silk to ensure hemostasis of the vessel. The distal end can be freely tied as this part of the leg will be removed. The muscles are further divided off the tibia and fibula to separate bone from muscle. A laparotomy pad is passed through the space and can be used to further bluntly dissect off the periosteum from the tibia and fibula by pushing proximally. Bovi cautery can also be used here for a particularly tough connective tissue. An oscillating bone saw is used to create the tibial osteotomy and bevel the anterior tibial surface and corners, removing sharp and rough edges. A bone cutter is used to push the soft tissues as proximally as possible. The bones are now completely separated. An amputation blade is used to free the posterior flap from the bones and anterior soft tissue. Here you can see that there is plenty of soft tissue coverage over the bone. Bleeding vessels are identified and tied off, including the posterior tibial artery here, which is being ligated with a silk tie. Next, the tibial nerve is identified, injected with 1% lidocaine, which is not shown. The tibial nerve, you can see, is placed on traction, suture ligated, and cut. When the holding suture is cut, you can appreciate the nerve retracting, which helps avoid neuroma formation. The BKA stump is irrigated copiously with warm saline, removing any clots for final hemostasis before closure. The fascia and dermis are reapproximated with Vicryl and the skin with staples. It is important to leave a few millimeters distance between dermal sutures to avoid ischemic necrosis of the skin here. At some institutions, a subfascial drain may be left. The incision is dressed with Xeroform, an ABD pad, and wrapped with Curlex. The stressing is removed on post-operative day two.